The human eye is a very important and sophisticated organ. It essentially detects light and transforms that light into electrical signals, which are then analyzed by the brain. Now, before we discuss the physics of the eye and before we examine corrective lenses, let's discuss the various important types of components that make up the human eye. And let's begin with the region of the eye known Known as the cornea and that is shown by region A. So most of the bending or refraction of light actually takes place at the front surface of our cornea and the cornea has an index of refraction of about 1.376 compared to 1.00 which is the index of refraction of air. Now let's move on to region B. Region B is shown by the following arrow and it's essentially the region between this blue section and the cornea. Now, this region labeled by B is known as the aqueous humor. So this is a watery transparent fluid that contains an index of refraction of about 1.336. Now the purpose, the function of this section of the eye is essentially to maintain the pressure in this region of the eye as well as provide uh, food for the various tissues and cells that are found in a neighboring region. Now let's move on to section C. So region C is shown by the following region between the these two purple lines. So this is known as the pupil of the eye. The pupil of the eye is essentially the opening of the eye that actually allows the light to travel into the eye. Now this appears black because very little reflection actually takes place within the eye. Now the iris is something that controls the size of the pupil, the size of the opening of the eye. So the iris is shown by section D given by these two purple regions. So the iris is a diaphragm that controls the size of the pupil. It automatically adjusts the pupil to let more or less light in. For example, in the dark, we need a lot of light to enter the eye. And so that means the iris will essentially open our pupil so that the size of the opening is larger. Now, let's move on to region E, which is known as the lens. That is shown by this blue region. So the lens inside the eye is a convex or a converging lens. So that basically means as light travels through the cornea and the lens, it is refracted or bends and converges at some point found on the back of the eye as we'll see in just a moment. So the lens acts as a fine adjustment for focusing at various distances. Notice most of the refraction of light actually takes place on the front surface of the cornea and the lens does not actually bend the light very much. What the lens does is it focuses our light into a certain region known as the retina. Now, once again, the lens acts as a fine adjustment for focusing at various distances. Since most bending took place at the cornea, the lens does very little bending. Now, our lens has an index of refraction that varies from one person to another. It ranges between 1.386 to 1.406. Now, let's move on to these two brown sections labeled as region F. Now, these are known as ciliary muscles and they act to change the curvature of the lens to focus our objects and this ability to change the curvature of the lens to focus our objects is known as accommodation. So what happens is when the lens bends, the focal length of the lens changes and so our uh, image can be focused in or focused out. Now let's move on to section G which is shown by the following 
following region. So this is known as the vitreous humor. And this is essentially a transparent fluid with an index of refraction of about 1.3. 337. Now let's move on to a region found on the back of the eye uh, given by H and this is known as the retina of the eye. So the retina of the eye is an area that consists of an array of rods and cones which are essentially specialized cells that act to change light energy into electrical signals. So the light travels through the cornea and the lens, it bends and eventually ends up on the retina. And the rods and cones essentially transform that light, the energy in light, into electrical signals. And those electrical signals then travel to the brain via the optic nerve. Now the optic nerve essentially sends the signal, the electrical signal to the brain and the brain then interprets and analyzes that signal. Now the last section that I'd like to mention is given by I and this is known as the fovea. So the fovea consists of a very dense section of cones and it essentially represents the point where the sharpest image is usually formed.